In this video, we'll be looking at how to create a new container registration from within the CFS module. This is required to record all containers arriving into the depot. Containers can be registered two ways, automatically when attached to a load list or manually via the container registration module. We'll be covering the manual registration process for the arrival of an empty container ready for export. The CFS CTO, otherwise known as the Container Freight Station, is used to pack or unpack containerized cargo from both sea and air freight consignments. It integrates with the forwarding and transport modules, as well as the Sea Cargo Depot module relevant to Australian Customs Only, which is discussed in a separate learning unit. To start, go to Operate. Forwarding, CFS CTO, and then Container Registration to open the Container Registration search screen. From here, click on the arrow next to the New button, noting that there are two container registration options. The option most commonly used, and the system default, is the CFS Container Registration, which should be selected for containers arriving at the depot for packing or unpacking services. The second option is Storage Container, which is available for container storage billing. For this example, we'll select CFS Container, which opens the new container registration window. Under the Details tab, the Purpose section will automatically show CFS. Moving down to the Mode section, click on the drop down menus to select both the Transport and Container Type. Next, enter the organization code for the client who is the owner of the container you'll be packing. If you don't know the code, click on the search tile to locate it. Next, click on the Container Detail sub-tab and enter the container number, ensuring that it conforms to the ISO standard of 11 digits, including four letters, followed by six numbers, and a check digit. Then enter the container type, commodity code, and the seal number. Click on the drop-down menu to select the sealed by party. Now click on the Dimensions sub-tab and override any dimensions if necessary. The container dimensions are set from the matching container type record, which is explained in other learning units. Now click on the Weight sub-tab and confirm the tear weight for the container. Then enter the net weight for all shipments being packed or unpacked into the container. The gross weight will calculate automatically to be the sum of the net and tear weights. Under the CFS sub-tab, into the booking reference, the DPI or Department of Primary Industry seal number, sealed by party, and then the customs reference number, which is required for exports only. The pack and unpack date field is read only and will populate when you enter and pack the container via the attached load list. Now, moving down to the pack unpack detail section, click on the load list number search tile to open the load list search screen. Use the filters to find and select your load list. Highlight the line, and then click on the OK button. Returning to the container registration window, verify that the chosen load list is now attached to the container. Relevant information from the load list will then populate into the container registration, including the carrier booking reference, entry number, and ocean bill number fields. If you need to record a service, click on the Services sub-tab. You can add additional service types via the system registry. We'll leave this for now and click on the Container Arrival sub-tab. This is where you record the arrival of the empty container. Enter the organization code for the transport company that will deliver the container to the depot. Then enter the driver's name, driver's license number, the vehicle registration number, the arrival date for when the container was received in the depot, followed by the storage location, when relevant, to identify where the container was then stored. The empty field is used to record the organization code for the container yard from where you'll pick up the empty container. Once you've entered the code, ensure the correct address is selected in the adjacent drop-down menu. Now click on the Container Dispatch sub-tab. This is where you enter the delivery information for a full container delivered to the container terminal or wharf. Into the transport company book to deliver the container, then the driver's name, driver's license number, the vehicle registration number, 
Departure date, storage location, and then the empty return date if required. Ensure you include the CTO slot number and date for the delivery of the container to the CTO or wharf. The cargo status advice field is relevant to Australian login companies only and is explained in other learning units. When ready, click on the Save button, noting that the container has been allocated a job number starting with the letter D. On occasion, you may need to convert the container from a CFS container to a storage container and vice versa. To do this, simply click on the Create Storage from CFS button. This function can be used when storage would occur after the CFS packing unpacking process. Conversely, click on the Create CFS from Storage button to prepare a storage container for CFS services. Both conversions require the arrival date to be entered under the Container Arrival sub-tab and will transfer all the necessary existing data to the new container registration form. Now click on the Create Storage from CFS button to review the Storage sub-tab container registration details. Within the Sailing Details section, if the container is not linked to a load list, click on the Select Sailing Schedule button to attach a current schedule. The schedule details will then auto-populate into the remaining fields. If the container is linked to a load list, the sailing details and pack date will be inherited from the parent job.